This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. You're going to end AJ's reign in October of 03. Meltzer would say it was a good match, but it was almost a double turn. Jarrett played heel in the angle with Jimmy Hart earlier in the show. Jarrett had styles on the figure four when Siaki tries to interfere. Eric Watts blocks the ring. And then Dusty Rhodes comes out and gives si- Siaki the bionic elbow. It took him away from the ring with his bull rope. And by the end, Jarrett turned heel and used a belt shot for the win. This was kind of silly because Watts was there. And when it happened and in the previous match with AMW versus the naturals, well, the naturals cheated to win due to outside interference of Glenn Gilberti. Watts ordered the match to continue and AMW ended up winning clean. This appeared to be written by Dutch Mantel and Jarrett, but boy, a lot of the Russo influence seems gone, but still this feels kind of Russo esque. Um, do you think you guys got too heavy into story at times in this era of TV? Let me ask you, 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 you said it feels like Dutch and Jeff. That's what Meltzer said, right? It's appeared to be on a show written by Dutch Mantel and Jarrett as a lot of Russo influence seemed to go on. If I remember correctly, and you're the encyclopedia, this is the first time that we flirted with Hulk Hogan. And so I think Russo might've been on the sidelines waiting for you to figure that out. But I think I was going to think, I think Meltzer might've read more into it than it was probably there, but anyway, and, and I think that was the impetus behind switching the title back to me that we were going to get Hulk and Hulk and Jeff versus uh, Hulk versus Jeff is where we were headed and not Jeff and AJ anymore. If I remember correctly, that's all the reasoning by why we took it off AJ. This is the AJ Styles episode, and I'm pretty daggum sure that's why we were going back to me for it because of the Hulk story. I got you. Uh, well, you guys do a rematch on December 3rd. Um, uh, this Meltzer would say the show had been promoted for a few weeks around Jarrett versus styles for the NWA title. It wasn't the best match the two had had, but still a very good match. But the TNA title match pattern is becoming far too much like WWE, where you now have the obligatory ref bump. The challenger gets a visionary fall, tons of run-ins on every finish. This one featured interference by Don Callis, Eric Watts, Kevin Northcutt, Joe Legend, CM Punk, Julio De Niro, Abyss, Chris Harris, James Storm, Jimmy Hart, and finally Kid Cash. It was just overdone. The coolest spot was Jared about to use the guitar early on, but Styles did it in Zagiri, shattering the guitar into a bunch of pieces. Uh, after everyone had a run in and left, the finish saw Cash coming to the ring with a second guitar. Styles went to give Cash the Styles clash on the guitar, but Jarrett pulled the guitar. Styles still did the move on Cash, but Jarrett got the guitar and used it for the pin in 1926. But Jeff, this is kind of what I was aiming at. All these folks interfered in the same one. Like, is this too much of a good thing, or are you good, you defend it, or, or, or too much of a bad thing? <laughs> well, I was trying to be polite, but it, it, you were it, trying to be polite. It sucks, Look, Jeff. Exa- well, it, it's it's trying to serve too many masters. Literally, we got to get guys on the show. There, just all of the above. So, you know, no excuse. I mean, it, at the end of the day, we didn't hit grand slams, home runs, thir- triples, doubles, or singles. Sometimes we actually took the fastball and we struck out without even swinging. But no, it, it was it, this era, especially still finding our way in so many ways. Things get a little more complicated. There was a circumstance that we don't really have to discuss. You probably know what it is, but there was some, uh, turnaround we'll call it in ring of honor. And as that happens, there's a lot of folks who say, okay, we need to separate ourselves from ring of honor. And well, here's what's written in the observer. Many people are writing that AJ styles, getting the title. That'll be his second NWA title run was a concession for pulling him from the RRH shows and noted Daniels being put on the X team as another one. Both of these angles have been planned for more than a month in advance. And it was written here that styles was getting the title as the original plan and then losing it back to Jeff Jarrett, still the plan before the TV show. 
Vince Russo wanted Styles to be champion, and Jarrett had no problem with it, but Jarrett was insistent he become champion when TV gets off the ground. Let's time out right there. Is that right? You felt like you had to be the champ when the TV started? Fox Sports Net? Yeah. Yeah, I did. And explain why you felt that that was necessary. Uh, heel champ, I think, is important when you're writing chapter one. You only have kind of, it's easier to establish two or three um, baby faces that they're, they're on their chase, people to pay to see the chase. Once the chase is over, there's no, it's you, then you got to rebuild and all that. You can come on with a heel. Uh, I had a name uh, value. Um, you could count on me to be there every week. Blah, 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 blah. We've sort of covered all that. But yes, I, I, I thought it was important going into Fox Sports and as well as later with Spike. Uh, but as you were kind of talking about the Ring of Honor situation, yeah, there, there's a thread that will go through this episode of without really putting it on pen to paper and money and all that. But emotionally, we committed to AJ Styles day one. Yes. AJ being the stand up guy. I'm going to tell you a few things as we get probably toward the end of this episode on how much AJ styles was committed to being a TNA guy. I mean, it was his heart was emotionally connected like mine to TNA in so many ways. So he's going to win the title here. Um, the storyline is that Chris Harris was the advertised opponent. But Raven injured his shoulder early in the show. He's taken to the hospital. So the entire show was built around Vince Russo being put in a position to decide who gets the title shot. Harris is begging him to pick James Storm. Uh, Goldilocks, this time pretending to be Mexican and doing a hideous job of it, tried to get Abyss the shot. Conan and BG James did a promo saying that Ron Killings deserves the shot. And Styles comes out and said he deserves it. And finally, Raven came out and said he's the only one who could actually beat Jarrett. So Russo should align with the devil to achieve the big picture goal, which is to get the belt from Jarrett. And they tease they're going to pick Raven, but in, and then tease they're going to pick Styles. And in the end, Russo refuses to corrupt himself by picking Raven and uh, pick Styles as the best man. Meltzer says the one thing this company has done well is position the title strong. The cage, ma cage match had good heat. Styles isn't nearly as good inside the cage because it takes away a lot of his moves. Do you agree with that? Uh, I, I, I was just about fell out of my chair. Metzler said the one thing that we've done is make the title important after 9,000 run-ins uh, for week after week after week. So right. it, I, I, I say all that to say, look, Dave, the, 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 the episodic nature of his industry that I've got to tell a story every week in my newsletter. So all of a sudden he gave us props to that. When me and you have both just sort of laid out that go, man, you have scrambled eggs week after week after week and title switches and this and that 9,000 run-ins. You would think that's the last thing Dave would write, but he wrote it, but putting AJ in a cage match, you know, he can't do the dives, but man, he can do just about, you know, outside the ring, but. I can see where it, it may take away a little of his arsenal, but also know that, you know, AJ can bounce off that cage like none other. He He's just a dynamic performer, no matter what setting you put him in. I, uh, graveyard match. I mean, you just think, I just, I was thinking about uh, all the different matches he's been in uh, just across the board in his career. And these were the early formative years. Uh, he, yeah, he's, Phenomenal. How about that name? So you're going for the big guitar shot. AJ gets up, gives the guitar at Enzigiri, breaks the guitar, gets the pin. It's a cool moment, but man, the Enzigiri to shatter the guitar. That awesome. was an unbelievable spot, was it not? Uh, awesome. And and you know, um, you know the Andy Kaufman promo in, that it's done in Nashville and he's done from uh, like a dressing room and he steps out and and he says Jerry Jarrett and Jerry Lawler. Anyway, that little office, uh, box office, my grandmother sold tickets there, but that's where me and AJ, that's where I dressed. It served as my dressing room and my office and finish room and multi-purpose room in the asylum days. I remember AJ looking at me going, hey, what do you think if, 
And I'm like, oh, God, yeah. Because I'd taken the – I'm like – because he could stand flat-footed and just jump up and kick almost above your head. I'm like, yes. And we so we worked that spot out. It was really – the people – like the guitar exploded. They loved it. They didn't see it coming. Really good spot. All AJ. Fantastic. Um, May 19th, Ron Killings becomes a champion. And then you win it back on June 2nd in the first King of the mountain match, which we talked about last week was AJ. I mean, AJ is really just a transitional champion of sorts, right? Like because of his maturing process of verbal skills we always had russo we, you know we didn't want to put him so transitional champion may not be a lot of times i looked at myself as the transitional champion i mean and, you uh, might even it might even be said that you're one of the best transitional champions of all time oh that's it well put that feather in my cap <laughs> I, that's not a bad thing you no, can plug, I, I can be hateable I'm, and you can plug me in against anybody yes is good. No, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. But so, so AJ, I also think it, it was a, 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 when you looked at him knowing his X division ability, I'm not saying he's in the division, but his ability, I, I think he did a, again, he's the TNA grand slam guy at this point in so many ways, he was the embodiment of the brand. So to, I, I say that to say, so you could call him a transitional champion, but, but also he, he he's I think a step above a transitional that he was he did he really embodied everything about TNA. Lord knows you can't deny his success. I just know that w he's not keeping it very long, no. um, and it does feel like he would go into the if, if we say all right, we know AJ is going to win it, but he's not going to keep it because we want it back on Jeff, but we're going to put it on Ron in between. I'm with you. It just feels weird. Yep. Uh, yep. and then AJ is effectively, I don't know, this is maybe not the right phrase. A lot of people would say move down to the X division. And I know you say that's not the case moved over. Yes. Moved over. There you go. Um, he's going to become the X division champ again, beating Frankie Kazarian. And it almost feels like when I, when I gave you that compliment that you weren't so sure about being one of the best transitional champions in history. I think we should also mention at this point, AJ's probably become like one of your MVPs, right? He's going to make it work no matter where he's at, what division, what opponent he's in, showing out a little bit in the creative rooms. It was unanimous that he's the go-to guy in, in so many ways. He like who else would even be in second place of MVP. I right. mean, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't say that, that, that's no disrespect to anybody, but AJ had been healer babyface. He had, he had won tags. He had won X division. He had won the heavyweight. Uh, he, and, and, and he committed to us as a brand as well. Uh, Bill also, you know, he, he was a team player. It, it got in every aspect in the dressing room. He just was committed to the product. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you can notice any time we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a third of your loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.